Good afternoon, friends. I am back. I'm back. Um, so wanted to talk about chapters 9, 10, and 11. Okay, these are important nutrition chapters, okay? Especially chapter 9. All right, so if you are one of the ones that are planning to take your test or, or your certification test, this is definitely one of the chapters you need to know front and back, okay? Chapter 9, the basics of nutrition. OK, so one of the things that is highlighted in the basics of nutrition. All right. So one of the things that is used and this is generated by the United States uh, USDA Department of Agriculture. There it is. OK, <laughs> something that was initiated by the USDA um, was the my plate. All right. So I'd highly encourage you to go to <clears throat> go to, as you could see, let me see if I can shrink me down just a little bit. There it is. Uh, as you could see in uh, a previous page on 178, it does talk about my plate. Okay, it talks about making sure your plate is uh, nutritious, nutritiously sound uh, to meet an ideal diet, to meet an ideal caloric intake, um, and it's something that is very ideal in performance. Okay, so like I said, chapter nine, you need to know like the back of your hand. All right. So, but just one thing, one disclaimer, just because you know chapter nine very well, that does not make you nutritionist or dietitian. Okay. There are going to be some, if you are looking for that in the future, that is a good opportunity for you to do so, but you do have to accomplish clinical hours, at least in the state of Kentucky, um, to be considered a dietitian or nutritionist. Having said that, uh, just it's always good to know, you know, how to adjust or make recommendations on particular diets for your athletes, for your patients, maybe, or for your clients if maybe you're, if you're considering fitness. Okay, so one of the ways that you could do so, like I said, t take a look at page 178 as far as my plate is concerned. Also, check out page 181, um, and it talks about macronutrients. All right, your macronutrients being your proteins, your carbs, and your fats. Now, if you really want Want to really get to know chapter nine really well. One of the things that helped me was being able to adopt kind of those habits or understanding uh, macronutrients myself. Okay. So this is a really good opportunity for you to maybe adjust your diet, maybe change the way you eat um, <clears throat> and go over like your maintenance calories. And, and um, as I've told people before, you know, you could try any diet that you, that's out there, Weight Watchers, Keto, anything of that nature, but you always want to be at a deficit. Okay if you're really trying to lose weight. Now, gaining weight's a little different. Okay, again, you want to make sure that you're working with somebody or yourself as a future strength and conditioning coach or coach uh, to be able to provide a diet that's still nutritiously sound, but doesn't uh, put your doesn't put your athlete at a risk of developing any metabolic disease as a result of eating the wrong things. All right. So there, there it must be a deficit somewhere, but there must be some gains somewhere just in case you have an athlete that might be trying to gain some weight. All right. So. Again, uh, check out chapter one or chapter nine, page 181, that goes over macronutrients really well. And there's a few websites that have been provided uh, to be able to get more information about nutrition. So I highly recommend you take advantage of that. All right. So as we continue to scroll down, another thing that is good to really review and know like the back of your hand are the essential, non-essential and conditionally essential amino acids. OK, there's so much information about amino acids and, you know, what it is that you need and what it is that you don't need. My advice to you, read the text and then allow yourself to discern what is an ideal intake of amino acids for you, all right? So it's all about getting to know and learning the information before you really apply it. So like I said, definitely apply it into your own personal life as far as your macronutrients are concerned, um, as far as the amino acids are concerned, as well as uh, the type of, uh, well, glycemic index and your glycemic load, all right? There's an equation for that. All right, what your glycemic index and your glycemic load. Uh, this is still a good piece of information that you should utilize um, as far as establishing diets and as far as establishing diets um, and working with your student athletes who might um, <clears throat> who might have some metabolic challenges, okay? Uh, but this is not an opportunity for you to diagnose as far as nutrition is concerned. Work with a dietitian or a nutritionist either at that school or that university or a provider offsite will be able to establish what are what is good as far as uh, glycemic index and glycemic load for your athlete. 
Okay. Like I said, you're not a nutritionist or dietitian unless you've accomplished clinical hours to do so. Uh, but it's always good to know. It's always good to have a background and there's nothing wrong with referring. Okay. Um, but table 9.5 has a glycemic index, uh, as far as certain foods are concerned, uh, your low, minimal, uh, and your low, medium, and high uh, GI foods. Um, how I look at it, you know, I think of my stepdad who is diabetic, and I just think about all the foods that you know that are ideal to that have a have a low GI as far as glycemic index is concerned. So, um, and just kind of taking a look at the high GI foods, the top one that I love, if you country like me, I love me some cornflakes with some bananas, okay? <laughs> but of course, I don't eat that every day, all right? So I just those are just things to just be uh, very mindful of. Um, and as you can see, the table continues. <laughs> as far as glycemic index and glycemic load. So definitely take some time to really review the tables in chapter nine, okay? It is to your benefit because if I don't mention it directly here, it will be mentioned again in other subsequent chapters as well as the other <laughs> previous chapters. Those are things that, you know, that's what the certification is about. It's all about learning it and then learning how to apply it. It can be confusing, but as always, let me know if you have any questions. All right, so page 190, has your macronutrient guidelines. All right, still one page that is something that is very good for you to know. But in this information, make sure you take the opportunity maybe to apply it into your own life, okay? So maybe you want to download an app. I've downloaded an app. I pay for an app. There are other apps that are you don't have to pay for. So definitely don't spend no money if you don't need to. I mean, we're in college. You shouldn't, right? So definitely take out, check out this particular page on 190. Now on page 191 through 192, it talks about something that is very important for you and I, especially during this time, vitamins, all right? One thing that I tell people all the time is that as you are getting ready to buy multivitamins, um, and we'll go into minerals in a second, as you're getting ready to purchase vitamins, okay? Take a look and see what's going on in your diet to see if there's anything that can be modified to be able to, to ensure that you're meeting all your needs to get the right vitamins into your body. If you have a pretty solid diet and you have a pretty clean diet, most cases, you really won't need excessive vitamins, okay? But like the standard American diet, it's terrible, right? Um, we want more of sugars, uh, the terrible fats. You do need some fat, but there's terrible fats out there. Um, you do need you do need some element of 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 good clean foods to be able to get to the vitamins that you need. But in America, we're not eating that. Okay, we eating hot dogs, hot wings, and everything else in between. Okay, <laughs> every day. So having said that, make sure that you take a look at chapter nine point eight before you buy your own multivitamins. Or if you're like me, uh, just kind of comparing and seeing what are some of the vitamins that you need. And I do that through my own blood work. Um, and I also do that through you know just monitoring what I eat regularly. Right. <laughs> So the main vitamin that everybody is talking about right now as we're in the middle of what we're in the middle in of at the moment is vitamin D or, you know, essentially vitamin D3. OK, uh, this is something that is very important. OK, uh, a lot of us actually don't have a lot of vitamin D um, and, you know, vitamin D can occur naturally through sunlight. So as we're inside all day or we're in the house all day, that's why I tell you guys all the time, if the sun is out, go get some sun. OK, uh, it's good for you. It has a, uh, it's a natural source of vitamin D. You get a lot of sun. OK, um, but if not, then you can obtain it through a supplement or you can obtain it naturally as well through food, okay? So definitely take some time out to take a look at this particular chart, all right? Um, one of the things that we also need to to build strong immune systems, that good old fashioned vitamin C, right? <clears throat> so, uh, you know, what it does is that it's it's a good vitamin to take to help with absorption, right? So, it, and we'll get into minerals in a second, but those who might be iron deficient, what does the doctor normally tell you to take iron with something that has vitamin C or take it with vitamin C. So generally it's orange juice. All right. I have a, I, I take an iron supplement supplement every day. Um, <clears throat> and I've been taking an iron supplement every day for the last seven years. Um, but I make sure that I take it with uh, a vitamin C related uh, object. Um, Truth be told, I hate orange juice. It's too sweet, <laughs> but um, I usually take it in with, you know, 
some strawberries or I do a strawberry smoothie. Um, and sometimes it has like a variety of things in there. I love grapefruit. So I'll take vitamins. I'll take iron with like everything but orange juice. But if you want something quick, fast, in a hurry, then orange juice is a good option. Okay. So that's 191 and 192 that covers your vitamins. All right. So these are the things to, that, you know, you should just definitely take a look at and see if you can obtain it naturally before you run to a supplement. OK, so the supplementation industry is a multi billion dollar industry, partly because the American diet is so trash. So that's the reason why we just buy up all these multivitamins and we don't do our own research. So uh, it's a good chapter for you to know a good section for you to know as far as vitamins are concerned. Now, minerals, all right? So minerals are what I consider things that are, are ideal for healthy growth as far as energy production, bones, DNA. That's what I think of with minerals. Those are the things that, you know, are, are that exist a little differently. Sometimes they can exist on, well, like everything exists on earth, right? So uh, these are a little different. <clears throat> Okay, always need calcium, no matter, no matter, no matter what. Now, if you're like me and can't drink cow's milk, okay, I haven't been able to drink cow's milk since I was 11, okay? So oftentimes, like, you know, I'll get in calcium through greens, mustard greens, collard greens, um, kale, cabbage. I absolutely love almost everything on this list with the exception of milk. Yes, I eat sardines, okay? I eat sardines and crackers with hot sauce. So, um, but those are a really good source of calcium. Like I said, you always want to check to see what minerals and vitamins that you have naturally that is already in your diet without you uh, taking too many of them um, because there are side effects. Like they always said, too much of a good thing is never good. Okay. Uh, the one vitamin that is very, uh, that that is often kind of picked up as far as a deficiency is concerned, especially in women, is iron. Okay. Um, uh, iron is necessary for red blood cell production, which is neat, which is necessary for oxygen and being able to carry out an activity. Um, but oftentimes some of our female athletes will go through bouts of anemia. OK, meaning that there's there's some some blood loss or not enough blood being produced. Um, so oftentimes um, iron can be you know replaced with good old fashioned liver. How many of us eat liver? Let me know in the Remind app if you eat liver. OK, <laughs> I love liver love liver. Um, but again, it can be attained through liver, beef, lamb, pork, love lamb. No pork though. Um, I've had veal, poultry, clams, oysters, a lot of that stuff I love. All right. So I'm definitely getting a lot of iron in me um, because I have anemia. So and one of the side effects that you'll um, get through anemia, which uh, was, I won't say the answer, but oftentimes it's related to another thing that is happening um, in a previous chapter named PICA. I won't say the rest, uh, but, you know, sometimes with iron deficiency, you'll have those bouts of PICA with uh, with your female athletes. And it can happen in men, but it does not happen as frequently as men, um, because rightfully so men men don't have men don't menstruate. So, um, but that is one of the reasons why there's iron deficiency there. So oftentimes we lose it on a, we lose a lot of it on a monthly basis, but um, once, if there's a well-rounded diet in place, then it could be something that could be easily replenished. Okay. So that is primarily your tables that you need to know. All right. Table 9.8 and 9.9, .9, as far as your vitamins and your minerals are concerned. Okay. On page 182, definitely check out what your amino acids are. Take a look at my plate, explore it. Okay. I highly encourage you to maybe adopt your own macro, uh, diet based off of the macronutrients that you need and be creative. All right. Those things are going to be very helpful for you in the future as far as taking your exam. Now with the other chapters, which I won't go too deep into, um, like I said, chapter nine is your foundation. All right. To be able to understand uh, chapter 10, which is nutrition strategies for maximizing uh, <clears throat> for maximizing performance. OK, now this is an important chapter to really understand as far as how to manipulate a particular diet uh, to increase the athlete's performance. And chapter 11 talks about performance enhancing uh, substances. All right. So um, there are a lot of techniques and I highly recommend that you read this chapter. This is a pretty good chapter uh, by one guy who is uh, well accredited. I believe he's in Florida. 
really good guy, has amazing books out there. You may have seen in a previous video that I showed you a good book that is a really good reference. Um, but he does, he specializes in basically helping people just get lean. Okay. Um, but definitely read this chapter. It does talk about the different performance enhan enhancing drugs on there. I'm going to see if I remember the chart that I did put up there. Cause I did put a chart up there on one of your quizzes and your tests um, that basically covers um, the, uh, what the substance is and what it's known as in the market. Um, let me see if I can find that table for you as we scroll on. And also, I mentioned this chapter is, is really good in terms of knowing, here we are, chapter 11.1, not chapter 11.1, .1, table 11.1, okay? This is something that you'll need to know, all right? Because you will see this a couple of times, all right? So uh, one thing about this chapter, it provides a great amount of detail about each performance enhancing drug. It identifies which ones are banned. As far as I know, growth hormone is banned. Um, as far as, um, you know, major sporting events. Um, <clears throat> and it also breaks down uh, the substances that are used and what it does to what system. OK, and it also provides information about the adverse side effects. So definitely take some time out to really review these three chapters. I really think that you'll I think everybody can really benefit from this, whether you decide to apply this to your coaching strategy, whether you try to apply this if you're going into fitness in the future or even for yourself. OK, um, it's very good. It's helped me a little bit as far as I say a little bit because I still I still like sweets just a little bit. I have a sweet tooth, um, but it's definitely helped me into understanding the my nutritional needs, uh, which is important, especially now with being able to maintain a really good immune system and really reducing uh, the amount of body fat I am holding. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, definitely sign up for your Remind app because quizzes and a test are coming up soon. Okay. I'll continue to provide different resources for you that will benefit you. Uh, hopefully sometime by the end of this week, I'll be able to provide you another video that covers the remainder chapters in this learning module. Okay. I'll chat soon. Peace.